So far bomb, an explosive location beacon. An aircraft that's ditching or a ship that's sinking in the ocean may need to send out a distress signal with its location over a very long distance. In the days before GPS, a simple device known as a SOFAR bomb could be used. The bomb contains no electronics or radio transmitter. The SOFAR bomb, when dropped into the ocean, will explode at a certain depth. SOFAR stands for Sound Fixing and Ranging but it's also the name given to a layer or channel of water below the ocean surface with a specific property. Sound will travel the slowest when in this channel. Above and below this channel, sound will travel faster. Because of this, sound originating in this channel and traveling upwards will be refracted downwards back into the channel. Sound traveling downwards will be refracted upwards back into the channel. The result is that the sound will be trapped in this channel, which results in it dissipating a lot slower, allowing the sound to travel really far. Sounds in this channel can be detected at 4,800 kilometers or more if they are loud enough. The reason the SOFAR channel has the slowest sound speed is because of the temperature and pressure gradient that exists in the water. Surface water is warm because of direct heat from the sun. It gets colder the deeper we go and will stabilize at about 2 degrees Celsius. Sound travels faster in warmer water. Surface water is at the lowest pressure because no other water is above it. The pressure increases the deeper we go. Sound travels faster the higher the water pressure. When we combine these two effects, there is a certain depth at which sound travels the slowest. That is the depth of the SOFAR channel. This depth varies based on latitude. Here's how an actual SOFAR bomb works. This version is the MK-175 Mod Zero. It's designed to be dropped by an aircraft into the ocean. It has three parts, the tail fin, the signal unit, which contains four pounds of TNT, and the fuse unit, which also contains the detonator and the boost of explosive. Before the bomb is dropped, the arming pin is pulled. A spring-loaded arming plunger, which contains the detonator, will then be positioned directly in line with the firing pin. After the bomb is dropped from the aircraft, the fins would limit how far it can drift before it hits the water. After hitting the water, the bomb will start sinking. It's important that the bomb sinks relatively fast because it needs to reach the so far channel as fast as practical and in less than 5 minutes. This time frame not only minimizes the delay time for the bomb to explode, it also minimizes the chance that the bomb will drift far from where it was dropped. As the bomb sinks into the ocean, the water pressure will be increasing. At some point, the pressure of the water pressing on the rupture discs caused at least one of them to break. This allows the water to rush in and press on the firing diaphragm. The diaphragm then pushes the firing pin into the detonator which causes it to explode. This triggers the booster explosive which in turn triggers the main TNT explosive inside the signal tube. Based on latitude, temperature and other factors, the depth is set to match the depth of the local SOFAR channel. Once the bomb explodes, a good portion of the sound energy will be trapped in the SOFAR channel allowing it to travel thousands of kilometers where it can be detected. A minimum of three spaced apart detectors are required to locate the sulfur bomb based on the time that each of the detectors receives the sound from the explosion. Based on these times, the location can be computed through trilateration.